Hey guys, Neil here. I'm back finally for a two year, well, a little bit late, two year review on the Enphase IQ7 microinverters on my 8.37 kilowatt solar array here in Western Kentucky. So a few things to talk about here on the two year review. Just gonna go over any issues I've had in the last year, you know, looking back to the uh, previous one year review. A uh, little bit of work that I did on the system, not the system itself, but also the racking. Talk a little bit about cold weather and snow. It's like 32 degrees right now outside. Fourth thing I'm gonna talk about is power that I make in the fiscal year, which would be like September 1st to August 31st. And then I'm also gonna talk about my power per calendar year, which would be like January 1st to December 31st. And I'll probably get on the computer and show these spreadsheets a little bit more on more detail for the power, but um, I'll just chat about it here shortly. So let's take a look at some of the things that have uh, changed on the system. All right, guys, short recap here. This is an 8.37 kilowatt system. It has three rows of nine panels for 27 panels total. It's on Enphase IQ7 Plus microinverters. It's built on a uh, home-built racking system with six by six posts, um, two by 12 rafters, and a bunch of other stuff you can see in the install video. All mounted using Unistrut underneath here. And all the power flows into the IQ combiner box, then goes into a panel in my building, and then goes from that panel in my building to the main panel in my house, and then connects to my meter, which is a net meter, which measures power coming both into my house and leaving my house going back to the grid. So it's a grid tied system. So issues over the last year. Again, I've had this installed for 28 months now total, almost 29 months. And in the last year, Again, just like the one year review, I've had zero issues. Everything has worked just like it's supposed to. Power surges, we've had power come on and off a few times. We had a storm where we lost power for about six hours. Everything comes right back online, works no problem. You know, obviously this does not generate any power when there's a power outage. Since it is grid tied, it only sends power when it senses power coming from the grid. And that's for safety reasons that have been talked about in other videos and things like that. So no issues whatsoever. The only change that I've done to this system since I installed it is I have trimmed off the ends of my rafters a little bit. So you can see here, these rafters have been trimmed. They used to come out square. And the only reason I did that was I got a new piece of equipment to go in here to grab you know my buckets and so on and so forth and they hung down too low so i trimmed them off basically level with the bottom of this rafter board here so you know i can't trim this anymore so i just trimmed this up to that which gained me about well i don't know six seven inches which is all i needed to get that piece of equipment under here only change i've done Everything else, I come out here and inspect it occasionally. You know, everything is just fine. There's no corrosion or anything on any of the Unistrut. There's no, you know, dissimilar metal issues or anything like that. All the boards are still in good shape. You know, when I was cutting through these with a the circular saw, you know, they all felt pretty good. I would say that the outside two boards, that rafter and the last one down there seemed just a little bit drier because the sun hits them a lot more. So my saw blade was able to cut through them a little bit easier, but no issues. Next thing I wanna talk about was snow and cold weather. So I've got a photo that I'll show here of these uh, panels covered in snow. And that photo was about three days after the snowstorm and it had been warming up and I was getting some alarms on my uh, Enphase Enlighten app saying basically that I was having like power generation issues. So I was like, well, it's sunny out today. Let's go see what's going on. And I went out there and yeah, the thing was still covered in snow. So um, I can go up there with a broom, like a wide broom and broom it off a little bit, but 
I don't know, eventually the uh, sun will just melt the snow off them. But, you know, it lasted probably two or three days on there where I was making no power whatsoever. And it was sunny days. So these things, it's kind of like when you see the signs for a bridge on the highway. It says bridges freeze before the road. Well, same thing with the solar panels here. And uh, I guess they get cold and the snow sticks to them and does not like to come off for quite a while. So that's something if you're, uh, you know, power crazy, you might think about doing something to... Uh, you know make sure you have good access to clean those off i've got a little stair over here i can get up but i don't have anything to you know broom off the whole entire uh, array here so i'm going to keep this video fairly short just to make it a quick review video not go into everything again again you can go back and look at some of my other videos for more details on the install and again i'd appreciate it if you guys would subscribe or like this video or any of those other videos about the uh, solar array here but real quick power on the fiscal year. So again, this is September 1st to August 31st. The first year I had it in service, I made 11,172 kilowatts. The second year, I made 11,108 kilowatts. So that's a difference of only 63 kilowatts. So year two made 63 kilowatt hours less than the year prior that's like really good i mean they, that shows like almost zero panel degradation uh, i don't know what percent of difference that is but it's like negligible so then the other way i look at this is calendar year power so that's from january 1st all the way around to december 31st so that takes in like a year of you know normal cycles of a, of a year right so in that instance in 2020, I generated 10,908 kilowatt hours. In 2021, I generated 11,281 kilowatt hours, which is 373 kilowatt hours more in 2021 than I generated in 2020 calendar year. And I think that's, you know, really good to look at because, you know, a lot of people talk about panel degradation and how the uh, efficiencies of the panel goes down year to year. But that shows right there that, you know, from 12 months of 2020 to 12 months of 2021, you know, I generated more in 21. And that can be due to multiple factors. Sunlight, amount of sunlight being the biggest one. And, uh, you know, the number of sunny days, cloudy days, rainy days, everything like that's gonna factor into that. So I guess 2021 was just a nicer year than 2020. So that's pretty good. Overall, since I've installed the system, I've made 25,424 kilowatt hours, which, you know, is pretty good. And I've got that compared to the PV Watts calculator. And that equals out to 86% of what PV Watts estimated I would make. And I think that's one of the most important numbers that you need to um, think about when you're going to decide to install or pay for a system like this, because that all relates back to, um, you know, the, the income you're going to generate or, you know, the money you're going to save by installing a system like this. So when you use the PV Watts calculator, it gives you like best case scenario, how much power you're going to make per year or per month actually based on your GPS location, the angle of these solar panels and which way they're facing, you know, north, south, east, west, and the azimuth angle of these panels, you know, how steep of an angle do you have them set at? So a lot of people use that and I recommend using that in my design video to calculate how much power you'll make every month. But then there's always a question of, well, how accurate is PV Watts? And my data shows over the last 29 months that it's overestimating the power that your system will generate by 14% because I'm only generating 86% of what PV Watts said I would generate. So, um, and, and PV Watts has a disclaimer. You know, it, I think they recommend 75% for calculations and I think that's what I used when I calculated my system and I recommend in my design video. Um, but right now I'm sitting at 86%. So that means I'm ahead of the curve. Um, I'm paying off this system faster than what I thought I would. And just a quick number here, you know, my power is about 12 cents a kilowatt hour. So 
24424 times 0 0.12, that's $3,051 that I have saved by installing this system in 28 months. Lots of good data in here, but again, appreciate you guys watching. If you would, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate you guys sticking around. If you wanted to see this, this is the spreadsheet of my data. This first sheet here is by the fiscal year, if you will. So this is the first year that it was installed from September 1st to August 31st. Year two, same thing. And year three, which is partial, as we're getting down, it's middle of January now, so I don't have a complete month of January to input information in here. But you can see the first year it was in operation. I was at 86% of PV watts estimated hours, kilowatt hours. Same with year two, and year three is ongoing. And you can see that the estimated amount was 86, 86, and uh, this going on third year, we're actually trending a little bit better, we're at 88% of estimated power. This here is the calendar year power. So it was installed you know, for partial year of 2019, all of 2020, and all of 2021. And you can see in 2020, I generated only 84% of the PV watts estimated power. And in 2021, I generated 87% of PV watts estimated power. And if you want, you can go into detail here on some of these months. So each month, this is what PV watts said I would generate for each month of the year. And over here is what I actually generated each of those months. So, you know, it, it appears that in the summer, it's a little bit closer. And then in the winter and January and things like that, it's a little bit further off. February looked to be a bad month here. And again, this is all just due to how much power the system's generating. So sunnier days, you're gonna have more power. And what I see in all of this is that PV watts, you know, they, they take into account weather days and things like that based on your geographic location. But I'm showing that they generally overestimate what a system can provide. And on my system, it happens to be I'm only generating 86% of what PV watts said I would generate for the 28 months of data that I have for this system here. So if you're a little bit unfamiliar with those terms of um, you know PV watts and what they do and you know your efficiency ratio and things like that, I would go ahead and check out my channel and you can go to the DIY solar design your own system video and it goes in depth on what PV watts is, how you input the information to PV watts, and where you get that information, and this all equates to how much return on your investment you're going to get for your PV array or solar array system that you install. Appreciate you guys watching. Again, if you can, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll have more videos in the future. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm always there willing to try to answer the questions the best I can. Thank you.